the Cleveland Cavaliers relevancy brought to you by LeBron James. We are the Cavs. We only talked about when LeBron's talked about. And for good reason, because the one championship they have is brought to you by LeBron. If you're new to the channel, two times a week, I go from the worst teams to the best teams and how they can angle their next years into hopefully a championship level team. And I am now joined by Mr. Cade Bench Squads. Links will be in the description. But Cade, say what's up to the boys. What's good? What's good? How y'all doing? So the Cavs are in you know, a strange spot. They got a young core that I think is something to work with. They have, you know, Colin Sexton, Darius Garland, Jared Allen, Players like Larry Nance, Dean Wade, those kind of guys. But obviously, the vets like Kevin Love. But something a little strange is that they are looking to trade Khan because they do not want to extend him to the max next year. Cade, what do you got on that? I know a few teams who would like to extend him to the max because he is a very talented player. He's got a very high upside. He's got all the energy you'd want on the floor at all times, no matter the down by 20, up by 20. He's going to give it his all. A lot of teams want that, and for them to not want to give them the max is kind of weird, honestly. Yeah, that is, that's is someone who is obviously hungry at all times. That's a good point. Down by 20, up by 20. This man is hungry. He wants to come for it always, and that's something that's, you know, you can't teach that. It's not. It's, it's something you're born with. This guy is just a dog on the court. He is like, he reminds me of like Patrick Beverly, but who can score and take over games. We saw this man dog on the Nets big three. And I thought they would be all in with Colin Sexton. Like he seems like a leader, someone gritty. He's like a, honestly, John ja Morant level. I'm sorry if you're gonna hate me for saying that. Like that kind of potential, but even more, he seems to be a better shooter. He seems to be someone who can attack and I don't understand why they would gotta get rid of him and who they want in return for him. You add that and you realize you have the third pick who's probably going to be Evan Mobley, a generational talent. And if you see what he did in the Brooklyn game, well, he, he will just take over. Imagine he does that with Mobley on his side, running the two-man game, they're dominating. Added as Isaac Okora, whatever you turn him into. I mean, you have yourself a young squad. And honestly, that's a lot to work with just to throw away just because you don't want to give him money. Yeah, and someone like the Cavs, like someone who obviously is not a destination for you to go to. No one wants to go to Cleveland. Sorry to break it to you. Joe Kim Noah knows. No one likes yeah. Cleveland, but... Like, they have Colin Sexton and Darius Garland, a young duo who's been playing well together. They love playing alongside each other. But why the hell would you want to trade Sexton? Like, out of both of them, you want to... I mean, Garland's nice, don't get me wrong. More fluid offensively, maybe. But Colin's the guy. He's that... I would say Darius is more of the one and Colin's more of the two. Because uh, Darius seems to you know be more of the create, like a uh, passer, kind of looking for the assist kind of guy. But like you said, Evan Mobley, someone to add to this young squad, Jared Allen Center. Like, do they? What do they want for Colin Sexton? The picks? Like, I don't even know what they're looking for. It hasn't even been reported yet. Like, what are they gonna try to get? Ben Simmons? Like, I don't even know what they're going for. And who would it be better than someone to lead a young squad rather than a young, hungry player? I can't think of anyone from any team that would be a better replacement that could take a trade for. And another thing that's weird is like, are they gonna try and gear towards shift, like winning now? I mean, are they gonna try and get a Kimba Walker, someone who's experienced, that's ready to win? I mean, we saw at the beginning of the season, their defense was playing at a high level due to Colin Sexton being a dog. But I mean, their whole squad was just playing together. And like, it seemed like they might want to win. And then Ke uh, Kevin Love went down with a hurt and injuries just got him. But I just want them to realize that rebuilding does not happen overnight. You cannot be, a Phoenix Suns team from the bottom to the top in a matter of three years. I mean, it's going to take time, picks, developing a young core and consistency with your young core. You cannot change that often if you want to build something with that team. And I'm just scared they're going to jump the ship too early on Sexton and this whole squad that they could have with Mobley, Sexton, and Garland. And I think that just don't be in a rush to win now. Another thing I want to look at is Kevin Love. I mean, they owe him $60 million over the next two years, and you know what you're going to get from him. He's probably going to get hurt here and there. He's not going to really do too much on the court because what does he have to lose? I mean, $60 million over two years, that's a lot, yes, but what are they going to do with their cap? They have a young core that they're trying to build off of. Like I just said, you're going to let them develop. What do you need the money for? Buy him out. Let him go to a contender. Let him be that guy for someone else on an MLE because he's still getting paid that $60 million. You know, come to an agreement there. Get rid of him. Throw a squad like the Thunder did last season. I'm not biased or anything, but like the Thunder did. Hmm. You throw out a squad that's 19, 20, 21 years old. Let them, let them progress. See who you're going to find. You're not going to find any new young gyms. Like, you're not going to let Mobley be himself if you're playing him behind Kevin Love. Like, you have to let these players grow, and you need to get rid of Kevin Love. Like, that's just too much cap, too much time for someone who's going to get hurt, not play for you, and you're not going to win now. Yeah, because Kevin Love... 
doesn't hold i would say he holds no trade like little to no trade value honestly like no one really wants to trade for a K Love, even though he can maybe still play. If he does get bought out, he's gonna sign the vet minimum for either, ready for this? The Nets <laughs> or the Lakers. And then he's gonna get hurt in the playoffs. We're gonna see this stupid ass routine that we're used to. He's gonna sign with them. Like, hopefully, hopefully, God forbid, another Lamarck Soldier situation. Or Blake Griffin. You know, Blake Griffin didn't get hurt at least. But I think Kevin Love can be something for a contender, but definitely not gonna get anything to trade for trade value like, no one's gonna trade for me even a second round pick not get anything and i think that the the cavaliers gonna work on their office as well because let's be honest with them just like a lot of these teams who are in the lot seem to be in the lottery every year there is an inconsistent there's a, a consistent inconsistency if that makes sense no improvement you know like literally lebron like lebron was the Cavs from 2003 till when he left 2010 whatever it was he left and they were they got Kyrie, so they draft something good. And they waited till LeBron comes back. And then once LeBron leaves, it's back to the shithole. So I think they need to work on their front office, like a lot of teams do. And their coaching, definitely the development staff. You know what? Actually, the development staff isn't as bad as some of these other teams. Because obviously we see Khan, we see Darius, we even see Akoro, whatever the hell is his name, how you say his name. He even looks like he can play. But one of the most questionable, excuse my language, dumbass things that this front office did was trade Kevin Porter Jr. for a second round pick. What the hell? Do you remember this? And, th and then that man went and dropped 50 points. Good. Another thing I don't understand about these teams that, like you said, are stuck in the water year to year, like the Kings, who have been here for like 20 years, who knows how long. They've never had a real direction. They've never blown up. They have they tank so to speak they were just bad they got De'Aaron fox what did they do with that they got marvin bagley that was a terrible pick because what did they do with that and now they have no direction again they're stuck in the middle where hey they might be in the play and lose first round or they end up even disappointing us with that low of standard and missing it all around and they have a low lottery pick the Cavs will do the same thing if they don't find a direction and find it fast they're going to get stuck in that mid seven to ten area where you're never going to contend and you're never going to get a good pick they're just going to have to accept a few down years and that's just going to happen that's part of the process they just got to trust it and don't get me wrong like i understand kind of why they don't want to extend Colin to the max i like, kind of can see it like that he's not the guy i understand that like, he could be a great player but i can understand he's not the guy you know the bam who gets the extension the tatum who gets the extension the darren fox who gets the extension but I don't think Colin is necessarily needs the max. You know, he doesn't 100% need it. You know, I think he, out of everyone, Colin wants to win. So I think he would understand. But like, they don't trade him, trade him. Like, it seems that, like, if you don't get the max, it's like, you got to move on. Is that how it is nowadays? Like, Jamal Murray got the max, you know. If Jamal Murray get the max, John ja Morantz, if he if he gets extended, did Jaw ja get extended? I don't even know, but he's going I to. Think he has, he has, yeah, I don't think. He's going to. Like, they're going to give it to him. So I can, I can see Colin deserving it. But like I said, I understand if you don't want to give it to him. But trading him, I don't think that's necessarily the option. Like the one, you have to do it. Like they could have such a young squad if Kevin Porter Jr. wasn't traded. They could have such something to build on. And then like you said, third pick in the draft. They just have some questionable decisions. And I think they could turn around with Mobley. If Mobley becomes a great player and that, that guy, you know, like that guy that they want to go 100% on. Because maybe, who knows, maybe they want to trade Colin to because they're so sure that their draft pick is going to be that guy if it is Mobley because that could be another option as well maybe they want to pair him along with something else or get more picks instead of Colin Sex and stuff like that so I want to see before we 100% bash them say that they're a dog shit franchise I want to see what they do and speaking of the pick a little bit more I mean and we've seen a little bit of reporting on this they would be down like stupid to trade pick three you tank you got the pick you wanted they're gonna get a great player in Mobley they, and I'm a Thunder fan, and I am very biased a lot of the times. And they are in the conversation, and they have the assets to move up, but they would be stupid, downright stupid to move backward to pick, what, Scotty Barnes, who is, he would help the Thunder. He would be a good pick for the Thunder. I'm not going to deny that, but him on the Cavs, no. Why would you trade back for something like that? That's going to, it's like a Marvin Bagley pick. You take Mobley, you ride it out, you let him be the guy. I mean, I just don't understand it. Why 
Why? What would incentivize them to do that? Yeah, they would definitely would not benefit from trading that pick because that's like the opposite. When you're tanking or whatever you want to call what they're doing, there should be absolutely no reason to trade the pick because don't you tank for the pick? You know, don't you tank for that young town who's next up? Like that, it doesn't make sense to me. But the Cleveland Cavaliers, a team that I think should make better decisions, but a team that has something to work with. I really think they could turn it around. But guys, that's it for this episode. Catch us on Tuesday. We're two in the 12th seeds. That's it for me and Cade. Peace out, guys.